Petrol has gone up by seven and a half pence. I think that's a shilling and sixpence in post-Brexit currency. And that is the highest weekly rise since records began. But don't you worry, because there'll be a new record along any minute next week, next fortnight. Jamie Jenkins is our statistical supremo. He used to be with the Office for National Statistics, and we're delighted to see him. Uh, what are we meant to make of this uh, increase in petrol prices. Yeah, uh, evening, Mark. So obviously, I know you've got a worldwide audience, mm -hmm. but we're talking about the kind of the UK situation, mm -hmm. you and what we've seen and you, you're right on the money there to say that we're seeing these records every single week. So I, I would imagine we're going to see record prices again next week. So the, um, the Department for Transport, which is the government body that monitors fuel prices in the UK, they've been looking at petrol prices as of kind of the RAC and the AA in the UK. And we look at the weekly change in prices. We've had data back to the 1990s now, Mark, and over the last week, mm -hmm. we've seen the biggest ro weekly rise now of over seven pence since records began. And, and that kind of puts into context that really small cut that the Chancellor gave back at the end of March of five pence per litre. Uh, at the current prices now, we've got an average of 1.87 for unleaded petrol, 1.92 for diesel. I think the important thing, Mark, is that it's up 58 pence on this time last year. So we go back 52 weeks ago, you know, you're talking 58 pence. And remember now that historically, back in back in the day, the government didn't charge VAT on fuel, but they do now. And mm. they take the, the VAT on top of that. So the 58 pence rise in the petrol over the last uh, kind of year or so means the Chancellor's taking 11 pence more in VAT. So the Boris Johnson and Richie mm. Sunak were kind of cheering the fact that they'd given five pence off a litre back in March. But they're making 11 pence a litre more. So actually, the, the Treasury are coining it in more now, Mark, than what they were back before they thought they were giving a handout back to the public. Yes, that's a, that's a brilliant point, actually. They're, they're in fact, they, gave, they give us five pence and then they take 11 pence off us. Uh, so, in fact, when, they, when politicians go on about the windfall profits for the for big oil it's also windfall profits for big uh, politicians too you have an interesting theory on what's driving this uh, something that's different from the 90s and the 70s and all the other times we've seen petrol rocket up this day, this time uh, in all kinds of places the oil companies uh, are basically on a death sentence from our political class aren't they no, indeed, Mark. If you think we've had these kind of oil price spikes in previous kind of de generations and decades, but most governments across the world, in the, kind of in the more developed world, you take the UK, they want to ban all petrol and diesel cars by 2030. So if you're a company in a country mm. sitting on all this rich fossil fuel, well, you know, you, they, you're talking about the fact that the you've basically been given notice by many governments across the world that we're going to stop buying your product. So it makes total sense for them doing this kind of crash that we've seen with regards to the Ukraine war and the petrol prices going up, that you're going to try and try and get a little bit more and more money out of this because it makes sense to be doing that, Mark, because if you've been told we're not going to be buying your product in 20 years and there's plenty of supply still underneath there, why not make as much money as you can out of the public? And and obviously, you know, the Treasury rely on a lot of this duty, Mark. They make about like £28 billion pounds a year out of fuel duty, which actually is more than the combined mm. budget of the whole of the Department for Transport. But I think the Chancellor really mm. needs to be looking at in the UK. Now, Boris was talking last week about we're still looking at it and we're going to consider what we're going to do. But Richie Sunak, uh, Mark, last week was, uh, whilst he was, we've seen all these record prices, was out inspecting new electric buses. The average driver, if they're doing 7,500 yeah. miles a year, you know, they're paying 500 pounds a year more. You know, the Chancellor, the, the Prime Minister, they really need to act now because the UK cut five pence. Just over the border in Ireland, we've seen 17 pence cut. In Germany, we've seen 25 pence. In Spain, 17 pence. So, so Boris Johnson and Richie Sunak really need to get kind of their act together and start looking after families rather than looking after the Treasury's pockets. Yeah, Rishi Sunak uh, uh, testing uh, electric lorries and electric buses is basically the transportation equivalent of saying, let them eat cake, isn't it? Let them drive electric. I mean, this is preposterous. 
No, indeed, Mark. The thing is, where's all the electric going to come from as well? We've got the, the cost of living crisis mm. across the world. Is it in the UK as well? The energy price cap. But, you know, by October this year, the average energy prices for a household would have doubled compared to a year earlier. And that's including gas, yeah. it's including electric. We're using gas to actually make electric. There's not enough, you know, capacity mm. to generate the electricity to power all the homes. So if we go to 2030, and we axe all of these cars, yeah. where is the electricity going to come from, Mark? It's just absolute nonsense. No, on the first day that uh, there were no petrol pumps and everyone's charging their cars around the country, the lights are just going to go out everywhere. The lights are going out all over <laughs> Europe, as uh, was said before the First World War, and right now too. Uh, thank you very much, Jamie. It is always great to see you. Let's